be going live any second. We're live. Put on your big girl panties, and I hope today that they're oh, nice. waterproof because we are live from the Big Daddy Gun <laughs> Studios in Gainesville, Florida. Yes, that's right. And we've got special guests. Blake from BMH Knives is here from Arizona. <laughs> Yay. Um, what's up, Blake? See, there he goes. He's with How you doing? Good, good. We're going to be talking knives, and we got Walter Keller here. What, what He's doing the scissor thing from he's Safety doing... Harbor Firearms <laughs> in Not Safety Harbor, great. Florida. <laughs> and I think we got Brian from 904 Outdoors. He's jumping on. He's probably getting his stuff worked out. And uh, what's up to everybody out there watching this? We've got a bunch of viewers already. I'm sure we're gonna. it's going to be pretty lively with the comments. Say what's up, Brian. How's your audio? Can you hear us? What's going on? Yeah, All I can right. hear you perfectly fine. Okay, oh, cool. Gosh. So Brian's from 904 Outdoors. Um, you know, I don't know if you know how to turn on your lower third, but it, uh, should, it should be Hangout Toolbox. So move around on your screen, and you will see an app. Looks like a uh, it's a green circle with a white suitcase, and that's Hangout Toolbox. Hey, Hank, so you can press yeah. on people's face, and they'll pop up on the screen. Ah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can lock I can lock people's screens up there. So here's what we're going to talk about tonight: guns and weed. Guns and weed. <laughs> nice. So Lola, I can hear you over there. So guns and weed. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. <laughs> Lola just got here, <laughs> so she's already causing problems. Uh. And, uh, the reason, the reason why we're talking uh, guns and weed, because you know this is like important news. One of the most famous dudes to the YouTubes, actually the biggest subscriber count. He's got uh, over six million subscribers, Mr. FPS Russia. So apparently there's uh, like rumors, stories, or whatever saying that he got arrested. So I'm at, this is from the Firearm blog, blog. It says breaking YouTube personality FPS Russia arrested. So uh, FPS Russia, a charismatic YouTube gun personality, probably best known for nearly killing himself when he annihilated a pickup truck with Tannerite, um, spent two nights in jail. So you guys have to look at that video where he uh, blows up the Tannerite and the door goes flying by. Well, that's some scary shit. I saw that. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> so um, it says, uh, if unconfirmed internet speculation is true, Georgia possession of even small amounts of marijuana plant or any amount of other kinds of marijuana products that are not plant material oil. such as THC oil is a felony in addition to being prohibited from purchasing or possessing firearms as a felon he would be prohibited from buying guns in accordance with 18 USC 922 G subcategory <laughs> 3 <laughs> we, yeah, we could we could go on and on with that um, you know, and then uh, Outdoor Hub also has a similar story, and it's it's talking about how he posted um, he posted something on his subreddit. So if you go to if you click on that link about his subreddit, he says I'm much skinnier. Let me see what does it say. Da -da -da -da. I saw that. Yeah, he says something. I'm much skinnier than that, especially after two days of jail food. <laughs> uh, and he does like the uh, you know the winky face thing or whatever. So. You know, it's it's totally possible here that this is either like some kind of clickbait thing that he's doing. <laughs> you know, maybe it's fake news. Who knows? Um, FPS hasn't posted anything on his YouTube channel in about a year. Well, they so, had some they had some issues of one of their buddies getting murdered, didn't they? Well, that was a long time ago. That was yeah, a long time ago. it wasn't that long. Ago. It was a couple was, years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago. Um, yeah, whatever and, happened with that? I mean, who? Uh, no, well, I have no idea. Yeah. What happened? I, I, basically, from my understanding, just like every, you know, I've met FPS Russia, Russia one time. Very nice guy. You know, obviously, as the story says, he's from Georgia. Very nice guy. He's not Russian. Lots <laughs> not of people. Russian, not the door. No Russian. Yeah. Blew up a truck and the door came off. Like I don't know. Oh, yeah. Right past him. Yeah. yeah. That was that was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty lucky. <laughs> he was pretty lucky. Disclaimer, disclaimer. I don't have a TV. <laughs> Oh, so, <laughs> that's okay. You guys have to keep keep me. Uh, yeah, you probably do you, you probably don't watch a lot of YouTube videos either, right? I'm I'm so just booked with the production and Instagram right now that. Oh, okay. So you're I'm just making about. knives. Yeah, that's good. Trust me. It's but, you know it's it's, so it's like junk food for your brain. A truck and a door almost. Yeah, yeah almost went out. right past. Yeah. Him. Yeah. FPS Russia is a huge YouTuber, gun guy. Huge, oh, okay. huge gun. Can you, pull, you can't pull up. 
I wonder if I can go look at it. Yeah, so yeah, just make sure you mute anything you pull up. But you've probably seen him before. He's a huge gun YouTuber. Um, you know, what I was trying to tell Walter is that th this is like all speculation of what happened. But I think the guy who actually owns the channel was the guy that wound up uh, somehow being murdered by someone. Yeah. And it was a whole long thing. And we didn't see wow. FPS Russia for a long time. He did finally come back. I know he was doing some stuff with um, with the IV-8888 guys. I have no clue what's going on there now or what he's up to. But he's a nice guy. I've met him once, talked to him. This is a Russian guy who has all the crazy guns. And, yeah. No, well, he's, yeah, he's, he's not actually Russian. He talks Russian. He talks yes. like he's from the Soviet Union, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's got a pretty good. So that was a whole. That's a whole. Yes. Thing. Oh, yes. I didn't know that. I that's no that's like when you meet an English chick. I had. No <laughs> I have seen some of that stuff. Yeah. So Brian, you want to tell him about this? You know about FBS from Russia. <laughs> All right. Well, this guy, he he went around. I guess he had that whole crazy. He had that guy that I guess was murdered. His friend that had what do you have? He had he was an FFL that had just all kinds of crazy guns. Yeah, and oh, I guess the guy that was FPS Russia, as you call him, uh, he did a good Russian accent, and everyone told him to put on YouTube. He did, and he blew up. Yeah, and my kids are my kids actually know him. That's the only gun YouTubers my kids have heard of. They've never heard of me. They've never heard of Hank Strange. Hank who? Yeah, yeah, they haven't heard of anyone else. That does yeah, gun I, stuff on YouTube, actually, except FBS Russia, and they believed he spoke actually spoke Russian, and not, they also believed because he wow. did this drone video as well, where he put a gun on a drone, and it yeah. was shooting, and they believed that was real, which it wasn't that was real. CG, though. I think I remember picking that one apart, and, and like there was something weird yeah. about it. It wasn't real. Well, the funny thing is, is that there is someone. We'll talk about it later, but some um, there's someone that actually developed. Actually, there's probably a couple of people that have developed actual. You know, drones like that with guns on it. What were you going to say, Walter? No, no, go ahead. Keep going. No, just probably okay. some snide remark. Keep going. No, no, that's okay. We, we're always <laughs> welcome to snide remarks. So the so the whole thing here is is that you know I'm not just like putting this out there. The firearm blog has it. Outdoor yeah. Hub has it. Uh, supposedly, FPS posted something on his subreddit, and um, you know so. Hey, it's gun news, so we're going to talk about it a little bit. And I figure we might as well have the conversation about guns and weed and see okay. where you guys are with that. Do guns and weed mix? I know that it's still a question on the paperwork when we're and, filling out. Until it comes off to 4473, it don't mix, Holmes. Nope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's They even printed at the bottom now that says uh, even if your state has it legal, that it's still illegal by the federal government. Right. So, until, that, until that changes. Yeah. yeah, it's the same. You know? So they, I they, is that in anything, any kind of weapon you're possession right now, and it's just you know all the states are up in there right now, so it's like all this gray area, you know? Yeah, right. yeah. So do we? Let me first find out: is, is are any of you guys experts on weeds, on weed, or is anyone in the audience an expert on weed? Let's just find out first. I know it's going to be difficult after we just talked about the form. <laughs> For anyone to like, admit, uh, <laughs> this is not admission of using. You saw, you saw, you saw me try to use this uh, I, iPad here. I'm an expert at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing, nothing. Okay, what about you, Brian? You're you're probably well, the youngest of us all. So of course, so, younger that, years. I, I, yeah, I'm I discriminating against I'll Brian. This, I think. <laughs> of course. Hey, hey, where, Where's Willie Nelson when we need him? Come on. <laughs> I think it depends on uh, the person who uses it and how it affects them. Sa same with using a gun. Have you ever tried to use a gun yeah. when you're yeah. sleeping? Yeah. That's the and same how thing. often? If, if, if it's if it's if if the weeds attached to their intravenously, you know that's that becomes an issue too. Yeah. Say, say that again. Yeah. No, no. No. Say that again, Walter. I just I just meant if if if, if the weed is a constant, you know, way of life, that's probably not a good thing. Sure. Yeah. You know. So that you know, I mean, we, we can all air our things here. I I have never smoked weed ever in my life. Uh, I've got lots of friends that have that have done that kind of thing. I kind of grew up with that. I'm from the Caribbean, so <laughs> let's start there. <laughs> That's not even really a thing in the Caribbean. So I kind of no, you, you used to hang out with a lot of hip hop types, right? Yes, uh, that enough, too. I, yes, enough said. Enough said. Yeah, enough you know, said. but I'm from the Caribbean, like I said. I lived in Africa. My dad, my dad smoked weed like most of my life. He smoked cigarettes, weed, drank, 
womanized, all the all the good <laughs> all the good the vices. Whole, the whole circle of <laughs> Yeah. My dad pretty much did it all. Yeah, let's just say we I've experienced uh plenty of life. My mother was a hippie. <clears throat> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, we're def I definitely understand the whole culture, and again, it just it ha not having you not done it before again is something that you can't relate unless you have. But right. again, it goes back to it's you know yeah. it's well, interrupting ner certain nervous systems. It's absolutely uh, affecting your state of mind. That's where it's scary. It's it's a psych drug. It affects people differently because where they are in their state of mind completely. Uh, transmutes how that drug affects them. It's not like alcohol where everyone just gets drunk and passes out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, there are well, happy drugs and there's crazy drugs too, so, you know. For sure, for sure. Yeah, what were you going to say, Brian? I what? don't know how far you want to get into, like, the medical side and how you want to play well, all of it. I don't want to go conspiracy theory and all crazy. Well, that's okay. That's okay. You can focus <laughs> oh, we, it's not the first time we heard a conspiracy. So <laughs> it is yeah. not all... I you mean, know, Walter talks kids. about like wormholes and yeah, I brought, stargates up, I brought up the Stargate like thing one time, and I'll never yeah, live so, it down. Yeah. yeah. And this one, it's I don't want to get all you know touchy subject on it. Well, I've seen good and bad of both the whole side of weed. You know, people talk about it has its medical uses, and there's videos on YouTube, and there's you know actual scientists going through, and it's helping kids that have epilepsy and things like that. That you know, can't function without it. But of course, people are back and forth on that whole situation. What is it's that? Good, it's bad. <laughs> that there was people that had like seizures, and it was helping stop their seizures. Right. So that's yeah. why they had it. Yeah, we should probably go down before we get real deep in this conversation. Go down. So, Blake, what do you think? Uh, do you think that marijuana should be legal or illegal? Where are you on this whole thing? <laughs> Again, it goes back to the person and who's who's behind it. The intention okay all right so what do you what do you think brian yeah it's pretty much intention i mean we had we had a prohibition on alcohol and of course you saw where that one went to yeah and then weeds kind of like the same thing it's not like they're manufacturing a drug it it does grow out of the ground so i mean i still have a what do you call it a, a millennial perspective on it of maybe it can help people when it needs to be, but firearms and drugs and alcohol does not mix. So I still have that stand on, because they were talking about, the government was talking about, if you have the, that marijuana card, you lose your gun rights. I completely 100% you know, respect that, that if you're going to take something that's going to pretty much mess with your brain a little bit and kind of good or bad, well, here's the thing. Guess you what? Know, it's away. Not many people. You can't control the people who are using it. So yeah, on that remark. Yeah. So the, you know that's possibly a good thing to have right now, especially when there's so you know it's so recreationally used right now by youngsters are trying out. You don't know how it's going to affect the young kid. You know, especially if he's having a gun, he's not thinking straight. A hundred percent. Yeah. What do you? Well, okay. So first, Walter, let's get from you what you think about this. Do you think weed should be illegal or legal? Well, actually, I don't, I don't have any problem with it being legalized. Um, to you know, as long as you're not having your whole backyard and you're growing it to sell it, um, I think you should be able to grow it for your own use. I don't have any problem with that. Um, um, as far, I mean, it's like that's like if somebody comes into my shop and they were silly, slap a silly drunk, would I transfer a firearm to them? Probably not. Of course not. Yeah. So I'm if sure. they come in and they're like, "Whoa, man, what's let me, up?" Let me put it this way: There's some people who should not be smoking weed. That's yeah. a fact. Some yeah. people yeah. should not own a gun. That's a fact. Yeah. As no. I say, there's some people who shouldn't drive a car either. Sure, so, sure. Uh, right. So, and I, I, you know, I once again, I, but it, it always turns yeah. into this. It always turns into some political thing. Yeah. Um, so, so well, here's what I think, and there's a reason why I'm trying to find out from everyone where they're at. I mean, I don't think that it should be illegal, right? Um, as Brian said, it's something that grows out of the ground. We've had a prohibition on it. So does for, opium too. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we can't we can't stop that either. So, right, 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 and right. Um, you know, we've had a prohibition on it in a long time. It hasn't done anything. People are actually taking um, legal prescription medications you know, that are doing a lot of damage. To be honest with you, there's stuff you can get over the counter that does a lot of damage. 
There's right. lots of things in our society that does damage. I don't really see where it does any more damage than anything else because yes, people do react differently to think to different things, right? But that doesn't mean that we should say because a few people react this way that no one should have this thing. Damn, well, man, then I, I need my damn machine guns. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So now, now we're just talking about uh, what's good or bad or whatever. I, I, yeah. I, I view life this way. There's uh, higher vibrations, lower vibrations. So whatever you're using that tool with, are you using it to do lower vibrational stuff? Then that, if that's the case, then you shouldn't be doing that, you know? So again, put anything into that. Put weed, alcohol, food, sugar, you know, there's a lot of addictions and drugs. Sex. Sex. Sex pornography. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, can, you can name it, you know? Go along all, all the other drugs that aren't serving you, but we're taking on as dogma, you know, on day to day because you, you don't know better. You don't know what you know, right? So, yeah. I mean, and what we want is we want human beings to be able to make choices freely. So now, you know, and, and not do, at the same time, not do things that are destructive to other people. Now here, I think is the reason why it's a question. It's a question for lots of people in the world. You know, we're, we're pretty much gun guys. So we're talking about this because this whole thing happened to FBS Russia, maybe. And, you know, that could potentially take away his ability to even ever make videos ever again or to possess firearms. I mean, if you're right. If, and should, should that be, should that exist? Should something like this be a reason? Well, he, he's put himself in a position where he's now kind of leading the youth, you know what I'm saying? So they're probably looking at that more as like, you don't want copycats doing the same thing. Cause that could get dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're a young youth, you're interested yeah. in. Well, we don't have, yeah, but we don't have any evidence that he did uh, so let's say let's say uh, first of all I don't know if he like you're a youtuber is that if you're an athlete you're not you shouldn't be leading the youth necessarily so yeah. I don't know well, if you're a youtuber just, you can't depict who does you know right yes people people look up to you absolutely but you know people should realize that these people aren't uh, someone They're to people. follow yeah They're I people. wouldn't follow Dennis Rodman to North Korea right now <laughs> or ever I would follow anybody in North Korea myself anybody yeah. I don't care who they are but so um, the thing is, we also don't, you know, there's also nothing that says that he ever did anything like that and handled guns, you know? So what, what do you have the right to do in your own, in, in your own privacy when you're not necessarily hurting anyone else or putting anyone at risk, you know, and doing something like this, if this can put, put you in a, in a case where now you lose the ability to defend yourself, you lose your second amendment rights and all that kind of stuff. Is that really cool? Is this something that should exist? You know, when people can s smoke tobacco, tobacco is incredibly destructive, not just to a no, person. Nicotine, nicotine is the most addictive substance. Yeah, uh, but, but tobacco is destructive to the people around you. Uh, well, when you're that's smoking. a whole other story, um, you know. Well, you don't <laughs> believe that? You know, it's so that, you know, I'm not saying that that means we should get rid of tobacco either. I'm just saying to you that there's lots of destructive things out there. And this is this is one reason. This is a reason that exists in our society here in America where you could take away people's rights. What do you what do you think about that, Walter? Well, until the laws change, that's the way it is. I mean, well, regardless of what I think until it changes, you know, if, if I made my living handling guns, which I do, actually. And then all of a sudden I do something that I chose to do and I lose that right. What, what am I going to do? You know, okay. I mean, that makes sense. But do you think that it should exist? No, I mean, well, I mean, not for marrow. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> we'll put up a can of worms here. We'll go from, we'll say one's okay. Then what's not, what's next? Heroin's all right. Well, what's next? What's well, like, uh, you know, um, yeah, but people are doing all these things. This is what this is what I think people don't realize. I mean, do, well, I mean, do you, you, know, you, what's want, it, do you know what's you in want, prescriptions? What's, we have a pharmacist sitting not far from me here. Would you want? Well, let's say that. Yeah. Would you want your airline pilot, um, drunk out of his ass? I mean, they have done it before. No, of but, course not. I don't want someone to get drunk or high or or or, 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 or they gotta have their fix. Like, their look at Tiger shit. Woods. Look at Tiger Woods, for example. He was mixing medications, whether he knew or he didn't know, and he was out there driving. He got pretty. He was pretty lucky that he didn't um, kill anyone or or seriously hurt anyone on the road while he was driving. I don't want anyone to do that. I don't think you should do that. I don't think if you're really tired, you shouldn't oh, be yeah, driving. You can, you can kill you. Go drive along the interstate. Look at all the signs of people who hit a tree. That's not drunk driving. That's just falling asleep. So, yeah. 
So the thing is, the question here, though, I think is, and I agree with on what you're saying, Walter, that, you know, if you know that these are the rules and you're doing something that's a business related to your livelihood, you shouldn't get into it. I agree with that. Don't do but, it should it, but, but should this thing exist in the first place? Should it exist? Or if it does exist, should we get rid of it? Well, sure, I guess. I mean, you know, I, I'm all for doing your own thing. But once again, I, I, that's the way it is now. Yeah. Whether I think it should be going away or not until it happens. What are, law, what are the laws right now? Is there a federal law right now? What, what, like, what is that? Catch me up to date. With. So, yeah, Brian, do you want to – I know you were talking about this earlier. Do you want to go ahead and – Federal law yeah. Federal law on marijuana is it's still illegal, but the states have decriminalized and made – like Colorado. Colorado fully decriminalized. Wait, you can go to so the store. Yeah, but don't take that. Don't take that stuff across the border into Kansas. Yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> and, and any card holder in Colorado cannot possess a firearm. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, here, actually, here in Florida, it it was a law because the voters here in Florida made it a a medical thing. But the the people that of course run our state said, "Guess what? You have a marijuana card for your." Your medicinal marijuana, you can't own a firearm in Florida anymore. Mm -hmm. You lose your gun right, like with a snap of the figure. Once you once that card is in your possession, can't have your guns. Yeah, Colorado, so, mm -hmm. Colorado has crazy gun laws to start with, so they don't have a yeah, lot. How of does that? Does one ways. was it one nix the other? I mean, well, so here's the thing: none of us are um, none of us are lawyers. <laughs> Let's yeah. say that you know we're all speculating, I, I, and then you and then you have like uh, what the state says versus what the federal government says. And federal government is supposed to trump the state. Yeah, federal government trump the state. So whatever the federal government says, it's it's what goes. It don't matter yeah. by the state. That's and why. Here, here, great little perspective. I think what's happening here. I think at this point in the game, it's fair to to say, hey, choose one right now. Basically, what they're saying is like we don't know enough about the effects of this drug on you kids, on this kid, on that. You know what I'm saying? To let these people run around with guns and be influenced on their drug. Who knows how that's going to affect them, right? So for right now, pick one. I'm that's totally cool. That's responsible right now. And yeah. especially as this evolves, obviously as these states start legalizing more of these and it just becomes more of a, a trend and it's gonna be, you know, you're not gonna stop it. So once people understand it more, they're not gonna be so scared of it and it's gonna be able to coexist a little bit. Yeah. So do you think, Blake, that it, that you, do you think these laws should exist or, you know, are you fine with them until there's clarification I, right scientifically? Now, point, just because, again, if we did say, hey, it's a free for all, you can have a license and a marijuana license and a gun, again, you're blanketing a whole part of the population who aren't validated in either one of those categories. Should you even be owning a gun? Okay, should you be owning a gun and be ingesting this plant that you have not worked out in yourself yet? because it affects everyone differently. If you're not looking at it that manner, it's not helping you grow. You're using it for a low vibrational state, not a higher vibrational state. So again, it's too many unanswered questions. And yeah, you're gonna have, have loonies running around, you know, having misfires because you're gonna forget there's a bullet in the chamber, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not- yeah. Well, I think, so So the thing is, is that yes, everyone um, gets affected by things differently, but we do know what happens to most people. I think you, I think most people that smoke weed slow down, <laughs> you know. Well, that's, that's not a bad thing. You, you've never rushed a, a match yeah. or something, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. slowing down can save lives. Right. Now, the, the thing that I think, though, is that, you know, what are we going to do? Test everyone to see how their reaction is. Can't do that. And then it's people, and then we'll have special cards like these people react good with this because it's like testing people for peanut allergies or, you know, this thing or that thing because we're so complicated that, you know, we're not all going to react the same way. And there's other things that set, that set different people up. Some people just uh, sleepwalk. And that's oh, usually yeah. that's sure. usually benign, but some people might like kill their wife in their sleep. So let's th let's give them some uh, some good med med meds to put on and sleepwalk. Yeah, let's I see mean, what if, happens. Yeah. Well, I, you know, so I mean, if you remember that guy, I think in South Africa that was uh, he was an athlete, and then I think he was a paraplegic athlete. Yeah, and yeah, he killed yeah, his yeah. model girlfriend. Said that he did it while he was sleeping. Yeah, we all react differently to things, yeah. but well. but in general, you know, there's ways that we react to this stuff, but. Regardless of how we react to it, you have to separate what you do in your life. So you might go to the range and shoot guns or go out in your backyard and shoot a bunch of guns. You might own 
you know, a kajillion guns and you do stuff there, you have the right as a human being when you put those things down to go over here and like smoke a cigar, drink, you know, sure. have some alcohol if that's what you do. You it know? happens every day. Not yeah, me, exactly. but not, not me, but every <laughs> Yeah, and then we have a situation in America where states, and it's kind of like Florida is medicinal purposes right now. That's usually the gateway to, the to becoming recreational. Um, yeah. uh, Nevada's recreational. What's Arizona, Blake? I don't know. We are medicinal. Medicinal only. So you have all these things going on, you know, and in some cases, the, the medicinal use of, of marijuana, like uh, Brian was saying, helps people, right? Makes them feel better takes away headaches, takes away pain. It depends yeah. on who you talk to and again why the reason yeah. that why they got the card. You know how loose California was. At yeah. the end of the day there's a group of people who want to use it recreationally who have to say things to get things. And there's right. other who yeah. honestly a small percentage where it actually does help. How many of that it actually is Yeah. I mean I don't I don't have a stake in it because honestly I am so nerdy it's not even funny. <laughs> You know, so I'm, I'm not doing that. But I think that the, the question here is there are human beings out there. We all this, this is this is a human being thing, right? It's inalienable that you have the right to defend yourself. And then we have human beings that are losing the right to defend themselves because of bullshit laws. You know, re, what I personally believe is we have too many laws. We need we need to simplify the laws. There's too many laws and too many things that could happen to you that would that would uh, lead to you losing your gun rights. You know, um, I, listen, I know of people who like th there was a there was a story here in Florida of a guy that um, he, I guess he was a corrupt politician or something like that. He took some kind of bribe or did something along those lines and uh, he lost his his gun ownership rights. What's that? OK, you're, corrupt, you're you're a bad person. You bet you did something unethical. Now you can't defend yourself. <laughs> You know, that's crazy. Or am I alone in feeling like that's crazy? No, well, it's crazy. dealing with the, uh, the tool of destruction, you know, and it's been obviously the gun replaced the sword and the sword used to be a tool, you know, again, a tool that can either help create. I always think of it again, it's either create, destroy to create, or destroy to destroy. Those are your options. Like, what do you sometimes you have to create something for creation, especially the hardened tool edge? how it's manufactured anything you see in front of us has built our lives, it's built our dreams, but also it's shed the most blood. So again, it goes back to that point to where, yeah, you, you have to, you have to look at it that way, you know, mm -hmm. but how, how to separate, how to, how to toe that line, there's a balance. Yeah. And that's probably what we're not thinking about, I think, in our society, because honestly, there's a lot of laws in general, and there are a lot of laws like this that are, that they're honestly tools, in my opinion. They're tools that people use to take away rights from other people to do things. Well, let me put it this way. Here in Arizona, the, the gun laws are very lax. So um, mm -hmm. my experience here living up 30 years, 30 some years in Arizona has been that everyone's so kind, everyone's so nice. Like you don't, you don't, you don't, a lot of the stare tactic is gone. If you're going to do something, you're going to do it. No one's going to know about it. Like, apart from that, it's pretty peaceful here because you don't know if grandma's strapped in. You know what I'm saying? It's literally, yeah. it, gets that, it gets to that level. You don't know who or why or when or why. You mind your, you know, your teeth and cross your eyes, whatever. You say hello and goodbye. You know, that's it. Have some yeah. And that's the way it should be. I think that's the way it should be. You should never know what a person is holding, what their cards are, and <laughs> then you should be polite. <laughs> right? Well, I think that. Uh, brings crime down for sure. I mean, how about a state where you're allowed to, you're allowed to do all these other things? Because uh, I didn't hear what you said there. Do you mind? Yeah. Other states, I'm not sure which ones who are more strict on on controlling what we can and can't carry and how we can carry. It, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would I would agree with that. Arizona is one of the better states. Arizona is good. Kentucky. Florida is kind of like, you know, okay. <laughs> and then you have some states that are Wait terrible. Wait what do you mean Florida's kind of okay? But what? It's okay. I mean, you know, Florida has some things, right? Uh, every not, state you know, does when you dig down deep into it. But there are so. states that are better and there are states that yeah, are worse. As long as you're not in the Northeast, you're all right. Or out in the West, like Coast West Coast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everybody yeah. in the middle. The blue everybody states. In the, and, and, or Illinois. 
Okay. Yeah. See, that's what I'm trying to say. You no. know, they've it's always weird. been that way, though. It's nothing new. It's not. It's not like it just appeared. You know. Yeah. Okay. And here's the thing: on the other coin, I want there to be laws because I don't want just anyone just being able to do. You know, there's some people who should have <laughs> some people. Who can, should. Yeah. There's some people say, "Oh, you don't need any laws. You do whatever you want." It's like, do you really understand what if you said let people do whatever they want, what they do? Yeah. It'd yeah. be flat for everything. Empty people running around stealing everything they get their hands on. Yeah, I never said. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying I want no laws. I'm saying I want less laws. Well, so that's they, the they thing. Sensible laws and whatever that is. Sure, and you say, absolutely. Well, what is sensible? People, whenever you say common sense, what is common sense? Everybody doesn't have common sense. It's like you know the people will argue with you about. You know that's where it gets. It just it's so hard to it's hard to to talk to people that don't. Common sense is not perspective from your reality what you grew up. Yeah, what what yeah. is uh, my common sense might not be your common sense. So that's it. Yeah. Hey, let's just rip all the uh all the warning labels off of things and have at well, it. It used to, well before before <laughs> they let the lawyers loose and let them do whatever the hell they want, there was no warning labels on stuff. Find an old bottle of liquor. It has no it has first thing, no UPC code and no warning labels that you're gonna have frog babies if you drink yeah. too much. You know, or 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 it kills people in California, like duh, kills people. Everything right? kills keep, kills people in California. Yeah. Air kills everything well. that we have. I think <laughs> warning labels sometimes makes people use that thing. You know, right? It's like, oh, this is dangerous. Well, I want to do this. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so that's the weird thing about that. Okay, you know what? I just wanted to have that conversation. I think okay. that's what's the whole thing. We obviously, you know, we'll find out whatever happened to FPS Russia. For anyone who's joining, supposedly he got arrested, spent a couple of days um, in uh, in prison there for something maybe related to marijuana. And that's on the Fireon blog I'll if you want to look it up. Quick. Huh? To real quick, I want to enlighten you on something. I rather, if at all, if at all, if I had no choice, I would rather be around a gun owner shooting a range with a functional pod head rather than one who just tried it for the first time. That's two totally different experiences. Same reason you would want a functional alcoholic flying your planes because he'd done it a thousand times. You know, not there's no a, such thing as a functioning alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> the ones who flew the planes, that's pretty functional. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I can't fly. I think they just woke up and wonder how they got there. Yeah. So Blake, how is your um yeah, I think I think people are saying that we've got some audio issues with you. I don't know. Maybe you're moving around from the mic. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but just you know, it sounds okay to me as long as you're close to the mic. But I know Lola's telling me we've we've got some stuff going on there. So Yeah, getting a little bit of Oh, you are? Okay, you guys are getting that? Okay. A little bit, yeah. Okay, so let's maybe um, let's switch gears here a little bit and yeah, uh, let's see something else. Yeah, let's talk. So you know, we 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 have Blake on knives. So he makes knives. <laughs> Do you have to have a license to make knives? I think I asked you this before. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yes. So no, that will happen one day. License for uh, the oldest trade in the book. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah you're, one it, of them. Yeah. Besides yeah, prostitution, yeah, that's probably one of the oldest ones. Yeah. <laughs> you might be right. Yeah, so you're in uh you're in Arizona, so you can do a lot of stuff in Arizona. Oh, yeah. So you um tell us a little bit about yourself for people who haven't seen it. We had Blake on for a whole show. Um not sure what episode that is right now. It's one of the early episodes. Do you know? Okay, Blake. Eleven. Can you hear me? Are you guys Yo, listening? Yeah, yeah. So make sure you make sure you keep your, your mouth close to the microphone. I, don't know. I know that's gonna be that's gonna be yeah that's good <laughs> yeah it was episode 11 right episode 11. okay cool so but just give for folks out there that are just joining us and uh don't know anything about bmh you want to tell us what bmh is what's the philosophy behind that bmh knives is a small manufacturer of knives small artisan knives i do um from fixed blades to folders um swords axes just basically what i what i want to create that day post and sell on instagram and just build a brand of uh, good knives good vibes again just going back to that whole vibrational state and just understanding that you know there there's there's ways to use things and ways not to use things and same thing with your mind with your body you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so, okay cool 
So um, do you have some examples there? I'd like to share with folks out there. We're going to talk. I know Walter's got some knives. Brian, are you into knives? Oh, of course. Okay. Do you have some uh, knives? Then you better have some knives then. Hold on. So Give me one we'll throw, second. We'll throw up some knives. So hold on. Let me lock Blake in here. So, okay, this that's beautiful. This um, is a saber tooth design. It's a that cramp. looks so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's a recurve hollow grind. Did you show us that the last time? Um, I'm not sure. No, I think last time. No, I don't remember seeing that one. No, that was cool, man. Yeah, you showed this. Yeah, the Tonto. So, okay, so this is a Tonto. Tanto? Tonto? Tonto. I think it's Tonto. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Everyone says it different. Yeah, that's that's also very cool. So let me so ask, this, a, let me, let me ask a question, Blake. When you when you when the, when those are ground, are you holding on to them physically? Or are they in a fixture when they're ground, or how how does that work? I have both. My all my production is ground on a fixture, and all my customs are freehand ground by me. Okay, all right, yeah, because I'm sure I, I I always watch people grind blades, and I'm going, oh, just one little slip, and oh, that one's done. <laughs> yeah, it's like take much. It doesn't take much. Yeah, so uh, I'm just just get, just to give a shout out to some people who are in the chat. Jock Carpenter says, "I just use a steak knife. Does that count?" Now, <laughs> if it's a good one. So, so yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is it our artisanal steak knife? If it's an artisanal steak knife, if it's oh. a custom made steak knife, then yeah, that's awesome. Like Damascus steel and all that yeah. stuff like that. But if yeah. you're like me and you went, you know, because I went to like Walmart. <laughs> bought some, some, you know, and you got some chinisinal, <laughs> some chinisinal steak yeah, knives. China, yeah, exactly. <laughs> tools, knives are tools. I shop at Harbor Freight too, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is it, you know. Now, by the way, just so I, just so I don't forget, check this out. I've shown this before. This is an, this is an axe that that Blake made for me. My survival axe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's tiny. This is my head right here, That's and this is the axe. <laughs> so just for people to check that out. That's pretty awesome. And um, Blake, did you make more of these, or you just made one of these things? So those were, I think, a twelve limited run batch. So you. So there you go, twelve. One of twelve. Does this? I'll, never, I'll never make that again. It was a little gimmick I did. <laughs> you, you're never making it again. Oh my God! Now, okay. Oh dear. Be That's jealous, special, people. I Be jealous. Yeah. <laughs> no, I actually think this is pretty cool. I'd love to see like a, a big, massive version of it. You know. Mm -hmm. I need one for uh, you know for when I go off road or something like that. And, and it, in case you got to cut down a tree. Or something. Yeah, you know if I've got to chop down a tree or something. Okay, so what what's this axe that you're showing here? The big one you want. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. This is a half inch throwing hawk, so we do a lot of knife throwing out here in New Jersey. Oh, so that's a throwing axe. Yes, this is a throwing axe. Okay, so no, uh, like so now what does something like that cost? These run three fifty. Three fifty, cool. Okay, and I and I didn't get a chance to find out from you what the Tonto and then the other knife you showed. If you might, if you don't mind showing them again, because I know people are going to ask. They want to know. You guys can go to uh, BMH Knives. It's uh, bmhknives.com, right, Blake? Yes. There's no stock. But they can go to bmhknives.com. Sure. Yeah. Um, you're also on Facebook, Instagram. Not on Facebook, only Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Okay. Uh, and yeah. now, hopefully, YouTube. I'm trying to get a whole bunch of destruction videos. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so Blake will be on YouTube soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and my buddies go out, and we got so much footage of just destruction with guns and stuff, so I can't wait to pull out <laughs> the arsenal. Oh, and cool. Then, All right, uh, cool. So now, did you tell us about the Tonto and the other knife? Yeah, so this is a uh, Hecri. It's a smaller... Life support. It's a horizontal carry belt. Yeah. Construction. So th these are more, more affordable. These are one eighty. One eighty. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So do you? So are, all, are those also a limited run kind of thing? These I'm trying to bring on as my production run. So these are the ones that are ground on the jigs. These are the ones that I'm trying to prelude to the custom since not everyone can own a twelve hundred dollar tonto. Right. Okay. And this one just sold today. So. Okay. So those other knives that you're showing, do they come with a sheath or anything like that? Yeah, they do. Because I'm guessing it's set up somehow for you to carry it on your belt or some other. Okay, so it comes with this sheath. 
<laughs> so here's a horizontal scalp carry shoot. You can either carry this lower mid of your back or right in front of the belt, right in front of your. I don't know what carry you would call that, but. Yeah, kind of like sideways on your belt. Yeah, and it's all really pliable, plush leather, all genuine, and it really it, you don't you forget it's there. There's no hot spots. Okay, cool. And you said that that's like uh, one eighty. Yeah, one eighty when I have them in stock. But again, check Instagram and follow the builds because I know I'm gonna do batches of twenty five to hundred, and then I offload it on the website. Oh, okay. I yeah, because I gotta get one of those so. You got to, you know, work on it. Okay, so um, do you guys, uh, who's got knives to show? Walter has a ton of knives. A ton. So gonna, yeah, if you, if you guys have uh, knife questions out there, then, you know, just hit us up with the knife questions here in the comment, and I will, uh, you know, I yeah, will. Looking at learning how to make knives, they can follow me on Instagram. I do a lot of tutorials on there, and hopefully soon on YouTube here. Okay. Have you ever made knives out of, like, older, like, Tools, yes, those are the funnest. Like either that's the, what, that's what, that's what I wanted to ask you. What's the weirdest thing you make a knife out of? Out of a titanium rod, out of a vet's leg. Whoa. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what well, this was like a rod he wasn't using in his leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did a surgery and he had lost his leg and uh, oh. he the rod for all the years and was like. I've always wanted a knife maker making a knife out of this rod. I'm like, I'll do it. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. turned out really cool. Cool. So, um, Chris B wants to know, Blake, who makes your sheets? I do. I make them all in house. Oh, very cool. All right. And so, like, do your knives usually come with a sheath, or that's like a separate thing? They all come with sheaths. They all come ready, locked. Okay. Or oiled. Yeah, very cool. All right, so um, Brian, did you want to throw up some knives? Oh, of course, I got what some more stuff. There? I mean, you're of a little dark there, but let's yeah, let's ah. see if we can see. Yeah, sorry, my yeah. game room's a little off. Yeah. But. Nice. Hold on. If I could, is that? What is that? It's I don't really know. It it was actually from my grandfather before he passed away. I have a few of these that he he got in the uh, when he was in the army, actually the navy. Wow. So, show that here's this one. Yeah, just show it again and hold it up if you don't mind. Okay. Oh wow. Oh, let me. Oh wow, that's that's gorgeous. And yeah. so here's the the sheath that it came in, and it has its own sharpening stone in it. That's awesome. And then here is the paratrooper knife that he got in the sheath, oh. and it has its own stone. So when he was flying, hunting submarines, he actually had this knife on him and passed it down to me. That is rad. That it is pretty, yeah, it's that's pretty worn cool. from him. Those are, those are the knives I love. I love yeah, that's, yeah. It's history behind them. Yeah. That is bad. Do you know what tool steel or what steel that is? Possibly do to it. Uh, it doesn't even really have any markings on it. Or anything. That's cool. Yeah. So I think it was when was he in? He was in the Vietnam War. Okay. So okay. he had some older stuff from there. That's that most of them, I guess had no had no markings. Yeah. I think they use a lot of D two in Vietnam. I have, yeah. I have to look into that. Yeah, that's got yeah, I would have I'm not, you know. Definitely not a knife expert. That's why we got Blake on. So uh, Brian Robinson wants to know what's a good all-around carry folder. Blake, you have any uh, opinions on those? I like fixed blades. I'm sorry, I like. Blades. Yeah, Blake's a yeah, Blake's a solidly fixed blade fixed. guy. I've I've got a spider co that I got from. Uh, spider co's are nice. I like bench mates. Bench yeah. mates are good. I like the uh, the the bench made. 530. Go ahead, Walter. You can hold that up again. I'll, um, I'll... Let's see here. Um, yeah. So while um, while Wayland, Wayland Wilson, Spider Co. I got this from um, the late Boy Scout, by the way. Who's uh, Wayland, Wayland Wilson was asking about uh, Microtech. This is a Microtech. I love Microtech. Okay, so let's lock, let's lock on you for a second. Show that again, Walter. Yeah, so micro... that's a Microtech what? Uh, UMS. Nice. 
Yeah, it's why it's my daily carry knife. I it it gets no quarter, as they say. It opens boxes. It does everything, you know. That's so, awesome. I've actually lost one before, which I almost cried. But oh man! <laughs> <laughs> and Microtex, Microtex are not cheap, right? No, it's about this. Is about when I bought it, it was about a buck eighty. So nice. Uh, okay, you look like, and you've had that for a while, right? This one's got a. 2005 date on it so okay wow so yeah at least uh what 12 years yeah that's a long time i don't know if i've uh been able to not lose a knife for that long okay brian's throwing up what is this this looks like this is uh, one of the old straight razors uh oh oh there you go so that's what walter used to shave with yeah ah. in the stone ah. age <laughs> Never used. Back when dinosaurs were still around. I'll tell you what, making straight razors probably. Those things are scary, man. I don't know. Yeah. What were you saying about straight razor razors, Blake? Uh, making a straight razor is probably one of the hardest straight razors. One, one of the hardest cutting toilets you can make, just as far as cutting her goes and how thin you have to get the blade to actually uh, slice hair efficiently and all that. It's nuts. There's a whole yeah. Side. Yeah, I'm sure that takes a serious amount of skills. Have you ever made one? Yeah, I have one right here. Oh, cool. <laughs> I don't make much of them because I'm telling you. Let's, let's take a look at this. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's yeah. got some file work on the handle. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I like the form and the simplicity of that, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's got like very natural curves. It's almost like a feather or something like that. It's funny. Like a pretty girl. Yeah. <laughs> so let me see if I'm getting uh while you're going through that. Hey, let's I'm getting see. Some, what do you mean? Walter never hit Prubity. What's this stuff? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Tony I, Contrell I, says Walter never hit puberty. What? The it's hell? Friday, so you know we're gonna call it like free for Walter Friday. So I'm like I'm hairy like Sasquatch. So yeah, I, yeah. I did a puberty a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> what are you showing, Blake? What's what was that? Oh, I was just earlier? showing the sheath I was putting up. But hey, Walter, I wanna talk to you i want to be able to get this uh tasuba which is a handguard manufactured in with a bayonet attachment and then these oh. skills can come up and wow. so you, know, you need a, you need a help, me, help me with the back end of getting this attached to an ar yeah you need like a loop on one end and yeah yeah you need the loop for the wherever it attaches to the gun and then the uh the socket I got a good CAD guy. If I just if I just know what the receiving. Uh, so what? Yeah, Walter, can you are, show us a close up of that? What's that supposed to? The, a well, this bayonet? is just this is like an M1 Garand bayonet. So, okay, but they're but oh, they're all nice. they're pretty much all the same. You have the socket where it fits into the gun, and then the loop oh. where it goes over the barrel or the flash hider or whatever. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Now, this would is, that be would that be similar in an AR platform kind of thing? Yeah, almost the same. That's not much has changed with bayonets. I Besides like the, the blade types and the sheaths and stuff like that. But, yeah. Um, I'm, we're, I'm going to figure it out. I'll let you know once I got that. Yeah. Figured. Speaking of bayonets, this guy here, my, when my uncle passed away, my dad brought this back. And it's actually, uh, it was made by Utica. Oh, wow. Um, and it's like after the war, they had all this leftover seconds for making bayonets. And they actually turned them into like consumer knives where they just left That's off the... Cool. They left yeah. off the attachment points and, and made them into fixed blade knives. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I did some looking up on the internet and I was like, oh, that is cool. I but like that. I, I wonder how many of those are out there now. How yeah, many? I don't know. It's it's because it's it's just like a leftover seconds kind of let's do something with this besides besides throw it in the scrap barrel. Yeah, yeah so, it looks like you could change the handle on that. Right? Yeah, you could. Yeah, it's got standard bayonet type um, grips on it. So what sheath did that come with? Did it come with a sheath? I didn't get a sheath. Um, you want a sheath made for it? Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, hey, I'll look. send it down. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, sure. it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. actually, actually, I am. Um, if, if Picasso offers you to make you a sheath, <laughs> you know, no, don't no. dilly dally, Walter. No, <laughs> yes, dilly -dally. I, I, I would have love to have a sheath. I got a good customer to show. <laughs> As long as it's not too ornate, that's all. Yeah. So, um, Waylon Wilson says that's a sexy microtech that you were throwing up there, Walter. Um, 
Yeah, that was Tony Cantrell that said you never hit puberty. So shout out to Tony. I like when people make fun of Walter. That's always good. <laughs> if it's about toys, then it's fine. You know, I do like mini bikes. And, uh, you know, and he also like said something about the French Indian War. Um, uh, Razor JB wants to know if Walter has a YouTube channel. Yes, it's Safety Harbor Firearms, as well as uh, what is it? Mower Death. Mower Death. Yeah, it's Mower on Death. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then Brian is from Nine Hundred Four Outdoors. Right, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Blake, did you did you put up your YouTube channel yet, or you haven't? You guys haven't posted videos there. I'm, yet? I'm still working on it. Um, we're gonna open pretty big with uh, a couple of cool destruction videos. So once I get that going, I just want to make sure I can post stuff in between manufacturing the knives and the family and all that. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you say when you say destruction videos, right? Destructing yes. knives or both? Yeah. T taking my knives to the limit, um, okay. breaking cool yeah. stuff, exploding cool, like kind of the same kind of thing, but with hopefully not having doors fly at me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> or being yeah. smarter about it, I guess. Yeah, Shard shards of metal flying back at you. Yeah. yeah. So let me uh, let me hit up some. Let me uh, shout out some people here. Exhale says, "What's up, fellas?" Exhale, that's a very cool guy. He does. Um, Walter, you weren't here. I think this was yesterday. Yeah. Um, Exhale does, um, you know, the, the polymer 80 yes. lowers for Glocks. Yes. Okay. Exhale like customizes those and stipples them. He's got some really nice. cool stuff going All on. Right. Yeah. So shout out to him. And, um, the Tyvin shows in the house. Yeah. Tyvin shows up there. What's up Tyvin show. Semper Parada says hashtag free will we Walter. <laughs> 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 fee will I don't know what that means. Hashtag fee will we want to. I don't know either, but, <laughs> but whatever. It's a hashtag now. <laughs> oh dear. <Yeah. laughs> so uh and then uh Jock Carpenter says, Did Walter use that in the Civil War? <laughs> <laughs> what, this one? <laughs> yeah. Or or this one. <laughs> and Mike Bryant says that's rad. Mike well, Bryant's being nice to you. He says uh that's rad, Walter. So <laughs> I, one of my favorite blade shapes is the. Oh, that's cool. Hold on a second. Let me let me lock you, Walter. Okay, that's cool. What the, is uh, that? Cookery, the, right? Cookery. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite oh, shapes. That's and sexy. and because it was used by the um, the the guys from Nepal. The um, uh, oh God, help me out here. They're in the British Army. The um, Gurkhas. Gurkhas. Okay. Gurkhas use these, and and it's a very effective and um, blade yeah. shape design. Yeah. yeah. So a quick thing here. Um, so Blake, um, Tyvin Show is saying that you might not have your your microphone there in front of you turned on. So if you go up into the thing that looks like a gear of settings, sure. uh, if you go up on settings and you click that, you should see a drop down that shows you your camera, what microphone you're using, and all that. So just make sure that you're using the one because that's probably your computer microphone that you're using. All right. Can you guys? Oh, hear? look at that. That's ah. awesome. Tyson. Yeah, that's Okay, listen, hold on. Let's everyone clap. Who's coming with us? Let's let's clap we for the show. Tyvin show. Yep, it works. Awesome. Wait, is that clapping for me or for the cookery? For for, <laughs> for you and for Tyvin show for helping you out. So, you know, oh, thank you. Shout All out right. to the Tyvin right. show. Right. <laughs> we sh you know. I t I'm telling you, I'm a simple blacksmith, guys. I don't know. <laughs> no, much. it's cool. It's all right. You know, that's why we. That's why we've got friends. That's why we've got friends in the yeah. chat. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, um, help crispy. Me in my my YouTube journey for sure. Absolutely, crispy says knife porn. So let's get back. So that cookery. Uh, this is a real. This is a real one from um, 1941, actually. No How many way. cookeries Whoa. do you have? Maybe maybe this one helped. Uh, help I like the, the handle. handle. The handle. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you look at it, what's you know, the handle my, material? Is that hand, wood? Is that yes. wood? Okay. Yes, it's a wood. Some hold it up. I, hold it up a little bit, just a little, right there. Okay. Oh whoa, whoa! What's a pommel? It is that brass. Right, um, actually, it looks like it's painted steel. To be honest really? with you. Really? Yeah. Wow. But yeah. this one's from Nepal. This is a real one. So from um, Nepal. Oh my goodness. That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at that shape. If anybody's, yeah. and I don't, I don't have any financial connection to these guys, but if anybody's looking for one to have a real one, um, so I, IMA has them. International Military Antiques. International yeah. Military. So let me ask you, what are those notches for? It has it is a spiritual thing with the the people from Nepal, and I don't know the oh. exact meaning of it, but it's a spiritual okay. meaning to okay. the knife. So, 
I wonder if there's any function that they had for it. I had to look. Um, yeah, like does it open bottles? <laughs> it should. I haven't tried that, but yeah, um, it might open skulls. But um, yeah. this is how you open a beer. That's a and, sexy knife, Walter. I like that. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Um, if you, you know, just by feeling the grip, it's it's made for uh, somebody with a smaller hand than us big white guys. So, sure. um, but, okay. but the the soldiers from <laughs> Nepal are known yeah. for their. For, their um, ferocity is that the word for it? Their um, ferocity, um, what their, Fier their the fierceness ferocity. in battle. Oh, okay. okay. They've done many a charge where the these things are up in the air and they go at it. You so, would not yeah. want to be at the that uh, tail end of that. No, they don't take any prisoners. So. Oh. Yeah. Um, what, Brian what is volunteering. What yeah, what year is that, Walter? What year did you uh, say? It has a ten forty one on it, so it's That's ten awesome. forty one. So. Pre, wow. uh, pre Pearl Harbor. I like that. So yeah. So Blake, have cool. you made any cookeries? I have a couple on my books yet, but I have not got to them yet. But I, I will be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, can they, just, yeah, I was going mean, to see they, if you have come, any there. They also come in all different sizes too. I mean, you can get sure. small ones different and you get the, shapes and everything. That one was really. I love the curves of that one. That's probably yeah. one of the nicest cookeries I've seen. Yeah, like really. I said, it, um, IMA has them for sale. So that's cool. They're not. For for a vintage knife like that, they're usually hundred dollars or less. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I that's totally worth it. Yeah. I love knives. Yeah, and Walter's just trying to be modest, talking about he doesn't have knives. Well seriously, Walter. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mostly have like military type bayonets and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of knives compared Walter, to guns. I have, I have to get with you with the bayonet thing. So yeah. once okay. once you send the sheath over, we'll we'll, okay. yeah. we'll yeah, we'll definitely exchange info. Um uh, probably at the end of this, we could exchange info. You know, Walter's got. Let me see. Now he's pulling out swords. What you got? Oh. This is a bayonet. A bayonet. A okay. <laughs> um, well, it's cool. um, from a um, uh, English. Uh, um, I'm, 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 I'm trying to think of the name of the rifle, but 1880s vintage. Oh military. wow, that's cool. Yeah. So that's a bay. Okay, so that's like okay, very cool. So someone wants to know. Um, there was a comment. Um, I'm not sure who said this. Does anyone make knives with the stone anymore? Yeah, um, I was just at Grizzly uh, Welding over in Phoenix, and he constructed this huge electric stone wheel. I think it was 24 inches by 12 inches wide. This whole thing. I mean, it was. You need a forklift once we finished welding the frame and everything. So, yeah, a lot of guys are still doing the old traditional style. Sharp, sharpening stone? Yeah. 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 Okay, I think uh, – well, actually, Lola says that was her. She wanted to know. But, yeah, okay, that's interesting. I think she wanted to know because uh, Brian was showing some with, this, with the little sharpening stone in there. Right. Is, right. That, is that what you wanted to know, Lola? Yeah. So she wants to know if knives come with those little sharpening stones. Well, those are just honing stones. So once you have a knife profiled and you yeah. vape the edge and it's sharp, that just keeps yeah. it sharp. Go ahead and show that. Line a knife with a stone, you need one of those. Yeah. To to this is just to kind of put an edge, a quick little edge on it, not to. Sure. sure yeah. Not to do any. Uh, yeah, that's when you go out there. But you know, if you you could probably just get those if you have a knife that doesn't okay. have that. Yeah. Right? You can, yeah. You can you can pick those up. Yeah. That um, that knife that that um, that was the the other one that um, was a Brian showed. Um, that reminds me of that first one you showed. There was a lot of knives made in Mexico that have that same style where the the grips are kind of molded, and they'll have a brass hilt and they have a blade about you know eight nine ten inches long with the same kind of sheath. Mm -hmm. um, nice. That was a real popular thing back sixties seventies, and now people collect them actually because. They were inexpensive back then, but now, yeah, I don't think you, you can't even probably do that stuff in Mexico anymore. It's probably illegal. So. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like a lot of things over there. Yeah, Mike yeah. Bryant uh, chimed in on the uh, stone. He says those stones are field use only, not the best way to sharpen. No. no. Yeah. So, um, all right. So let's see. So Blake, do you have what's like a big knife that you got over there, man? What, what kind of oh, you know? Is it was it the Tonto or I know you got I know you got. What's that thing? Oh. This is a collaboration I'm going to be doing with my buddy Chad. He's also a knife baker oh. designer. So I like grinding thick steel. That's a, that's yeah, why, does, why does that have a channel? Is that for your blood to like slowly drip out? It's a blood fuller. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. That's cool. It's just to add cool factor and take <laughs> yeah. down the weight. So you can, I mean, this is yeah. literally seven pounds. I don't even know. Wow. But okay. Chad, 
likes to make some big big knives. No, that's cool. Yeah. Alpha Knife Hunter Design. He's a uh, So this yeah, this is probably the biggest knife I'll be grinding, but it's a collaboration. Us knife makers like yeah. to So uh, grind yeah. Knives. Oh, so that's you collaborating with another yeah, knife maker? This is this is Chad's design and I'm gonna grind it all out. And I sent him some of my knives and he's gonna oh. do the same. So we we like to uh promote and and network like that. So you wanted a big knife, that's a big knife. Yeah. That's a knife. Yeah, so let me hit up a couple of people here. Uh Jock Carpenter says, uh, what knife did Walter use to kill dinosaurs? <laughs> a big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Boom. Um, Jump yeah, on the back. <laughs> this that thing was is a like good one. Size, so it's Walter, we of... need to make a bayonet cookery. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian Robinson wants to know what's the largest knife you can carry in Florida. I, um, uh, that's a good question. I think if it depends whether you have CCW or not, right, Walter? Yeah, well, if you're carrying a concealed, yeah, I don't think there's any limit on the size. Yeah. Besides what you it's can. It's also skewing from hunting and fishing and what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. Okay. Carry, and then, go ahead. Oh, I mean, somebody was asking me what that that, that British bayonet was off of. It's off of Martini Henry. That's what that one was for. Oh, so. Martini. Okay, Henry. Martini Henry. Yeah. Okay. I have one in the safe. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, and then um, someone by the name of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, this is what he's saying. So, you know, obviously the, the story is out there. So this is from our headline thing. FPS oh. Russia, this is what he's saying. I'm quoting him. FPS Russia arrested for receiving THC liquid through the mail in Georgia for a loved one suffering from cancer slash chemo treatment. Georgia law strict on marijuana slash THC liquid. So that, you know, that could be the thing. And that's, you know, I mean, come on, <laughs> right? You know, I, I, we don't know whether or not that's true. We don't, I mean, all yeah, of this is speculation. That's a far stretch if that's what it is. That's a far why did why, why didn't that person order it themselves? Maybe, maybe they live with him or something and, you know. And, okay, yeah, and well, we, don't that, know. we don't know. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, we, but, but this is, but, you know, and the reason why, we, why I was discussing it, you know, I'm not trying to beat up on FPS Russia. I'm a fan. I'm subscribed to him. I wish, you know, I would like to see him making videos and all that kind of stuff. I know his fans ask me all the time what's up with him. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so I would love to see him making videos and all that. The thing I was trying to say is that, you know, there's some stupid laws on the books. You know, and if, if uh, you know, this, this kind of stuff maybe should not be on the books. And slowing people down. At, all right. At some, at some point it might not be, but at the moment. It is, yes. Okay. Yes. I understand. <laughs> I get it. Okay, risk so versus reward, risk versus reward, right? Now, yeah, you see the laws now. Okay, if I'm gonna be playing that game, you know, there's consequences if you get caught. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, you know, this is the whole thing, you know. And sometimes, uh, trust me, I know the government can set you up. Remember, we were just talking oh, yeah, to yeah, Mike yeah, Daddy. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta government, be careful. You gotta be careful. Yep. Government can set you up big time, big time. Yep, yep. You know. I remember one. This is I probably shouldn't talk about this because Lola is here. But years ago, I had a girlfriend. And uh, she was like hanging out with me for a couple of days. And so there was this package that came to her house. And um, so someone's called, they're like calling her and they're like, oh, we were trying to deliver this package to your house, but you weren't there. You know, when are you going to be there so we can deliver this package, right? <laughs> and I remember saying to her, you know what? <laughs> the, the mail service, UPS, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't do all that. I they would not get that. that. I wouldn't get that package. And she didn't listen to me. So um, after I dropped her back home, like, Literally minutes later, I found out. And you out. hit the road. Yeah, I, yeah. So she got arrested. <laughs> they came, delivered the package, and arrested. Basically, um, she like I guess she had like a boyfriend that was in Guyana. This is like the one Guyanese chick I ever messed with. So she had this boyfriend in Guyana that maybe found out what she was up to, and he sent her something illegal. You know, and the uh, the federales <laughs> just they were watching. Know, they just set her up, man. <laughs> they were watching. Yeah, that they came. She signed for it, and they were like, "Thank you very much." Here's the handcuffs. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so you know that that kind of thing happens. Yep. You know what I mean? And so who knows? Who knows what's going down uh -huh. there? Somebody's asking about the auto switch on knives, like that one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the only way I roll. So Spring that's on your, assisted. yeah, is that the Microtech? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how many Microtechs do you have? Me? Yeah. 
Just one? I have one. Yeah, no, you have another one. You have another one. You have a special one that came with that uh, Styrog. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. a fixed blade, though. That doesn't that's count. That's fixed blade. It does count. Listen, Blake is our guest, and Blake is a well, fixed blade dude. Don't blade. say that Microtech doesn't count. No. No, 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 no. I, when I say that, I've never used that knife because it stays in the with the with the gun case. So yeah, you know. he doesn't say it's in the case. The gun is in the case. Walter doesn't keep any of his guns in cases or boxes, <laughs> except this. It's a Styrog because uh, this. Why was, do you want to throw me under the bus? Well, <laughs> this is no, but this is a special gun, right? That's yeah, what yeah. it is. It was it was a set. Yes. Yeah, it's a special set from Microtech when they were making um, Aug Styrog clones. Yes, so I don't know correct, if you know what correct. the Steyr Aug is, Blake. I um, don't. It's a bullpup. It's like one of the like you know. It's it's nice. heaven for Hank Strange. Yeah, before. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a bullpup. So I'm a big bullpup <laughs> fan. He's a pup guy. I love bullpup. So. Yeah, yeah. So. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So Walter's got the whole set. Everything stays nicely in the box. He opens it up. The box goes oh, and then he closes it. <laughs> so it's really cool. Well, again. For Flippers versus right. fixed blades. It's just my. I'm all thumbs, man. I the less you see me working right. things, the less things that I need to do. Yeah, the better. We don't I want anything. I want to cut. So your so your Microtech is a fixed blade, also. No, that's an out the front. Oh, okay. Just uh, oh, back okay. Yeah, one of the OTFs. I just can't yeah. find it right now. It's a shame. Uh, oh. I, I get I get like when I can't find my knife, I get like, where's my knife? Uh oh. Oh, where'd it go? Oh. Uh. Where'd it go? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's, it's been in the dryer. It's been in the washer. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me lock it here. Now, what is that? Oh, this is um, a clock. You saw yeah. me. He, he, I, I've handed yeah. these yeah. out. Plenty. Yeah. Yes. We, yes, we have. That's made of, uh, you do a lot of, that's uh, copper, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You do a lot of copper stuff. Uh, I promise you, you next time I'll have my Microtech. Yeah. Next time. <laughs> Thanks, Tyvin, on the mower death. Yeah. So you use copper a lot is for your hilts and lots of different things, right? Yeah, I love copper. Copper and AZ has just been a thing. Yeah. And it, it looks good. So. It looks good. So let me ask you, what's the weirdest knife or weirdest knife request that someone's ever asked you? <laughs> other than other than this little tiny axe, oh, or the, the titanium leg bone. Uh, knife. Yeah, oh, yeah, right, that, right. that is a weird you know, one. There is, there is always there's always interesting knives. Um, well, I did a whole wedding set once, which was fun, but I ended up I'm dis I'm dyslexic and also I'm colorblind, so I ended up flipping the colors on the grooms and the <laughs> and the uh, brides knives. So they were all. I had to read the night of the the day before they had a ship. I had to make twelve knives in the night. Oh and my wow. buddies come! Yeah, it was insane. So that was probably one of the most craziest. So what did you do with I, the ones that were wrong colors? I auctioned them. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, let me uh, let me just take this opportunity here. I want to remind everyone watching. We got lots of folks in here watching. Help us out. Hit the like button. Hit that like button. Help out the Hank Strange situation. Don't forget to share that we're doing this with your friends and all that kind of stuff. That helps us out. So hit the like button. Share with your friends on social media. Let them know that we're doing this. We're having a pretty good rocking conversation here. So all right. So that was a weird knife, Blake. Any other weird stuff? Um, you know, I'm sure I'll let me uh, if one comes to me, I'll let you guys know. Okay, but there's been a few. Okay, Brian Robinson wants to know what's everyone's all time favorite knife. Benchmade so 42. Benchmade 42. Okay, do you have one? Do you have one there? <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unprepared. <laughs> you have no respect for it. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing. So, uh, Brian, what about you, man? Uh, I love the stiletto style knives is what I like. Nice. So it's not okay. any You're particular dangerous. brand. Yeah. Those yeah. just old gangster so looking this, knives. Check this one out. Check this one out. Ooh, Ooh. nice, Walter. Nice. This is a Sykes Fairborn um, that I bought last year when we were in England. Yeah. Um, it's not a real old one, but it's like current issue for them. Yeah, hold so, that up again, Walter. That's very that's nice, cool. man. We like that knife. That's a very sexy yeah. knife. I like simple. Sometimes simple is better. Very um very distinct purpose for this. Yeah. Hold can you just hold the hilt? Uh go yeah, go yeah, right there. Hold no, keep going, keep coming over. Right there. See the hilt? Yeah. 
Now that's a that's a good looking hilt there. I don't know what you call that. That kind of like um, commando death. Yeah, that kind of grip that's on there, but that's pretty cool. You yeah, know what? Yeah, simple and cool. What's up? That's very similar to a knife I'm about to smelt a copper handle to. You know that copper? Hold that handle up again. How oh, you have that swell in the middle? I have a, uh, a foundry where I'm basically I stick this whole part of the blade in sand and I pour that whole handle and the hill at the same time as one one unit and it's going to be all encased in copper. But it's similar to to what you have there, so that's kind of neat. I'll, I'll, that will be on YouTube for sure. Excellent. Oh, that'll be yeah, awesome to watch. For anybody that wants to know, these were kind of designed as kind of like a brain scrambler. So you figure wow. it out. Because there's some there's some so that goes in that goes in the, you put that where like through the or something? How the hell? Oh. You know, the, the way you to sneak up behind the sentry is not the to do the front, but to do the up through the back of the spine. Because there's no screaming then. So nice. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, work there. That's that's the way that was designed. So Yeah, okay. That's not that we advocate that type of thing here in Santa Barbara <laughs> firearms, but uh, I mean, Art and like, tool edge, man. It can, you know, it can definitely. You know, it's like cool. a Bowie knife. The reason there was a big Bowie knife was it you could chop things, you mm -hmm. could chop people. Same with the <laughs> kukri. The kukri's got all the right. weight forward to lob right. off it's, limbs. It's a, it's a head lopper, the kukri. Yeah. It'll take it right off. So, um, but if you need to cut some firewood too, there sure. you go. So, a lot yeah. of use. Okay, I know Chris B is trying to get me to pull up um, the pictures that I have of of because he's got a really cold, uh, cool cold steel knife. But my phone, I'm trying to I'm trying to look it up, Chris, on my phone. It's like if you send it to me again, and I will show it on my phone because I can't go that far back. On and Facebook cold steel is good. And again, to educate you guys, there's there's production, there's mid tech, there's full custom, there's full handmade. Like there's so many genres of knife making. So like I just love knives of of any any genre so cold steel is another you know manufacturing a knife company who just they got really well thought out designs and you know good quality knives functional yeah. knives too for sure for sure yeah, yeah. so you gotta, um, you gotta keep that in mind too because some knives are designed as art for other sure ones are designed to go out and pack some brushes or some branches off a tree so you know for yeah sure. you can't mix the two together so Right, absolutely. Yeah, that's that would probably be like those railroad spikes that I was showing the last time right, that right. Uh, Blake was on, uh, which I didn't bring those. And um, Larry Sellers wants to know: Is SV ninety worth buying, or is it just something to brag on? So the the SV ninety, I'm not sure what uh, we're talking about there with the SV ninety. So we're gonna have to get some clarification on that, yeah, Larry. That, yeah. yeah, what um, you know. What knife are you talking about? Who's that from? SV90. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not yeah. sure what's going on there. So, um, uh, oh, is that steel? SV90 steel. That's if that's a super steel, you're already gone wrong. Go, go, stay, stay oh. with what's tried and true. Stay with tool steel. Stay, stay with um, some of the uh, stainlesses are all right. You know the one, the uh, 157 PCM. All that stuff is good. You know uh, S7 is good. D2s are good. If you want to even take it back for the 01 tool steel, uh, 1095, anything with a number in front of it, you're going to be solid. You know, it's going to last you forever. It's going to be something your kids are going to hand down to their kids, to their kids, to their kids. That's what you want. You want archive. Right. And you want something you can actually sharpen yourself, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All these fancy steels with all these crazy molly components and everything that, you know, they're smelting them from powder. It's basically powder melted steel, like. To the side like you're baking steel it's insane but no you a normal human can't sharpen you can't hold those tolerance <laughs> enough yeah. to even uh, uh start using the effectiveness of the steel you got to get it sharpened yeah. but the, and there is something to say for the cool factor though right oh for sure definitely cool yeah. factor. Yeah. yeah if you if you want your knife made out of a meteorite or something like yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> you know that's yeah. awesome but you're gonna pay a high price for that meteorite yeah. material and a high price for that steel too so right right absolutely. yeah you get bragging rights. Now, here's just to show something um, that's like a real cheap knife. And I got this from a friend of mine, Bubba Roadkill. I always talk about him here. He's like my my knife guy that I know locally. Oh, he's a knife guy, yeah. 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 Those are and, sharp knives. Yeah, so this is a uh, uh, Morkiven, what is it? Let me see, Morakavniv or something like that. It's basically, uh, 
It's basically a Swedish made knife. So let me see if you guys can see that. You know, and he, this is like, he, he, he got this to me because of what Walter just said, you want to get a knife that you could sharpen. So, and this is not expensive, by the way. This is like, I think you can get this on Amazon for less than 20 bucks. If you were to own one knife so, for function, that would probably. It's carbon steel. Uh, yeah. Those are sharp knives. Yeah, so you're saying like a good knife of function, this would be cool? That's so, and the, the price is right, and you can carry, you can put it anywhere. It's got the, you know, it's yeah. perfect. You yeah, know, it it's got this sharp. thing. Like, I actually had it. Someone asked me the other day when we were talking to, um, we were talking to Late Boy Scout whether or not I, you know, I keep anything like tucked in my socks. You could tuck this in your sock. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 don't, you don't wear those big athletic socks, do you, Hank? Yeah, I do. <laughs> You could skin and process a whole elk with that knife. Yeah, that's why. Right, that's why Bubba Roadkill wanted me to have this good survival knife. Yeah, you can absolutely. buy a bunch of these, keep them in the car or whatever. Right. Survival. I got one. Yeah, Brian, will you uh, will you bring it oh, up yeah. something? So yeah, there's my stiletto that I carry. Uh oh, that's nice. a serious old school, Ooh. old school. What is, the is thing? that spring assisted? No, it's a it's a button assisted. Nice. Um, what is the name of that? Uh, it's just a cheap, cheap. Oh. It's a uh, yeah, it's a flea market knife. I carry a bunch of them because I break them at work all the time. Those are the best. Okay. And the butterfly yeah. knives too are awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once you get ball. the whole thing down, yeah. <laughs> They're cheap. If I break it, it don't matter. So sure. That's yeah. why I don't want to carry something super expensive. You want to hear a knife story? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um. Back years ago, um, we did the uh, SOCOM show in Tampa, or SOFIC, they call it now. And I had a bunch of, I I bought a bunch of cheap um, laser cut uh, uh, paracord wrapped handle knives, and I got them laser engraved, and I gave them away, kind of like a a letter opener. And uh, Arlie Ermey was there with Glock, so I went over to the Glock um, space, and I I waited in line. I went up for five hours. No, 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 it was it was free. Oh no, I'm saying no, no. five hours. Oh, five. No, it wasn't that long as Sofic because there's okay. only, only a lot of people in there. Yeah. So I went up and I said hello and how you doing? Hey, you want a letter opener? And he goes, he goes, wait a minute. And he gets this other guy go in the back, and he comes back out with a Glock knife, oh, and he nice. signs it for me. That's oh, nice. That's so um, cool. yeah, hold it up, hold it up a little higher. There you go. Awesome. Is it right way? Yeah, it's right way right yeah. there. Yeah. That's cool. So I didn't do anything. I didn't ask for it. I didn't beg or anything. He just thought it was a fair swap, and he gave me a show us the blade. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, pull okay, it out. Yeah. Pull that out. It's a Glock, you know, Glock fighting knife. They call it or utility That's knife. Cool. Oh, look at those serrations on top. Turn that. Yeah. Turn that sideways for me. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That the story. Little... Yeah. The story uh-huh. about Glock knives is kind of interesting too, because at first they um. The Australian, Austrians wouldn't use them because they broke off when they tried in trials. And then mm. Mr. Glock fixed that, and then they came back to him about the Glock, the pistol and the design and all that, and next thing you know, they're making guns. So, But, um, yeah, it was kind of cool. Oh, no way. So that's the history. They started off trying to get into the They knife. started off making knives. No way. I did not know yeah. that. Yep. Thank yep. you for that. Oh, okay. That's no, I, I never heard that. I didn't know that either, yeah. that Glock yeah, started I, out. Well, we, went, we were out west when we were at the um, – the the museum in Cody, Wyoming, they have a Glock exhibit there right now, and um, they have a video running. They show the whole story how the Glock 17 came about. So um, that's cool. That, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Yeah. So I'm a big Glock fan. My buddy um, makes a Glock plates, mm-hmm. custom Glock plates on the back. You know the um, which is he, what's uh, that with a switch <laughs> on the back of the Glock? No, the butt <laughs> plate. Not yeah. full auto. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have a custom Arizona State one. I should. I should oh, okay. The butt cool. plate. He makes the butt plates, right? Yeah. Butt plates. Okay. Not the okay. butt plate. What go on? What's behind the sights on the slide? Oh, the back. The uh, back plate. The back, yeah, back plate. plate. Yeah, on the slide. Yeah, yeah. That's what people usually customize. So he makes that's those. Uh, is, yeah. So okay. He makes custom back plates. So yeah, yeah. that's my uh, my early army. Early. I met. I've talked to him a few times. Early army. And he's a nice guy. He's not one of these stuck-up guys that won't talk to you. He'll take time and chat. And, that's you know. cool. That's a cool yeah, story. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's a pretty knife, too. I like those serrations on the back. Yeah, yeah that's, they're pretty wicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, X, Exhale says, aren't true stilettos double-sided? I don't know the answer. Do you guys know? Uh, 
I think they are, but of okay. course, it's not a true stiletto. It's just cheap. Right. And okay. It's just cheap knives. Well, I would not know the answer to that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Stiletto is a blade type or the or the knife type. Or, you know, is this considered a stiletto or is this no, considered? No, I I feel isn't it the uh, the flip just. Show your stiletto. It's that whole thing, the button. Oh, the whole, the whole style. Yeah. Open. So let's see, let's see Brian's again. Show the action on it. Show the action on it. Okay. I think. As, as it uh, called, it's a kind of I call it old school switchblade. Yeah. 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 Oh, I get it. Yeah. So it's just uh, a. Yeah, that whole. Yeah, I think what what he's talking about is like maybe the I mean maybe the true assassin ones, you know. I'm the writing assassin. that down. I'll look it up. Is, yeah, yeah. Someone look that up. Uh, that we'll way. get to some other stuff here. And uh, Rebel Snapper says he came in late, uh, but he wants to know if we have love for ESEE -E knives. E -E. They're badass woods knives. So I don't know what ESEE -E knives would yeah, be. Yeah, yes, e -E so, so Rebel Snapper, you got to like tell us what those are. Let me look. And then, yeah. and Break then down the acronyms. Yeah. yeah. So while you guys are looking that up, I will uh, hold up. Let me see if I can get see, this. Somebody to... talking about me. Uh, I can get this to a lot. Paul for hours talking about you. <laughs> so uh, check this out here. Let's see if you guys can see this. I, I'll blow That's a bullpup. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, well, I guess, you know, he's got a um, – yes, he does have a bullpup there. He's a man after my own heart. But he's just um, – so this is Chris B's uh, cold, cold steel. Cold. Let me see nice. if I can get a better, you know – better shot here let's see okay here we go there's a better picture we've got a little bit of glare on my screen let me see if yeah, I can... you got a little bit there yeah. yeah there's a little bit of glare a little bit of glare let me lock it on me for a what second here. let's see if we can find a better way to show it but it's a, maybe like that i don't know i don't know <laughs> it's a nice knife nice uh cold steel knife very cool knife that he has man going. oh yeah okay Actually, yeah. Kind of cool knives there is the the Zula is probably one of the most uh, better popular knives of the ESEE -E knives. So they're very popular in the EDC community. The Azula. Oh, okay. So yeah, that I'm definitely a big fan of ESEE. -E. Oh, okay. So what does the ESEE -E mean? I think that's just the company name. So I'm on. Oh, the that's list. the company. Okay. Yeah. Oh, S A S A. Oh, okay. Yeah, like but that. here's here's one of the knives that are really popular. Really oh, let me see. Let me lock it on you. Oh, oh okay. that looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's really a functional knife. Again, something small. Yeah. Right. Here in cool. front belt, horizontal carry, scout carry. So really oh. good knife. What it's were you going to show? What were you it's almost like a skinner. I call it like a skinner where you could do skinning with it, things like yeah, that. Yeah. I like smaller knives that you can control and handle and get in tighter spots. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So, Brian, what were you showing? Oh, uh, this is actually a Swiss Army knife. The nice. color that they don't sell here in the states, it's a like glacier blue. Okay. I got from uh when I got Eagle Scout. Oh, oh cool. cool! So right. they actually they went to to the Swiss and had it made for me. Oh, oh nice! Cool. It's got your name engraved on it. Yep. So it had my name and everything, and it had just the box that it came in was a certain color and certain, I guess, special edition that they make over there that they don't sell over here. Yeah, that's nice. That's, that's cool. really cool. I like Swiss yeah. Army. That was both actually of, my first knife. Both of my sons yeah. are Eagle Scouts, so nice. Yeah, is that that's like the high level? Is that high? Yeah, that's yep. it. It's the that's highest it. thing. That's as high as you can go in the Scouts, huh? Yeah, nice. that's it. Okay, after that, you're special ops. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know, people make joke about that, but you get you get preference, you get rank when you go in the military if you're an Eagle Scout. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. Instead of going in as a private, you go in as a corporal. So. And then uh, job applications, everything, because the skills that they teach is pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. Congratulations on that. Okay, let's set up some questions. Um, um, so uh, Semper Paratus wants to know, any tips on knife sharpening, Blake? Yeah. Yes. If you want to be a pro at knife sharpening, go pick up the WorkSharp. It is possibly one of the coolest systems you'd ever find. WorkSharp? WorkSharp. You can find them at Cabela's. You can find them depending on what Walmart you go to. <laughs> oh, okay. The electric, electric sharpener? Yeah, that little electric sharpener with the belt system. It basically takes my 2x72 and downsizes it into a very small sharpening package. But I just outgrew it because I was just sharpening too many knives. But at first, if you're just doing kitchen knives or your own knives, I mean, once you master the system, there's a small learning curve. But I'm telling you, I've never had a sharper knife 
since I owned a Workshop, but I, I don't use mine anymore. But. And what does that cost? I think 130 is, you can find them at uh, 130, 99 bucks maybe if you go on Amazon. Like you can find, they have different models, but definitely worth every, every penny if you're into knife making or wanting to even show off how sharp your knife is. Like I'm telling you, okay. after five minutes of stropping, you'll pull, pull a knife down your arm, all your hairs will be gone. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. It, lo it looks like the prices just depend on, you know, there's lots of different prices depending sure. on which one you get. Yeah, you pulled it up, you're looking at yeah. it. Yeah. So is there a particular one that you think? Um, the Ed, the Ed, the the Onion series, I think it's Ed, Onion, Ted Onion. Ted oh, Onion Edition. Okay. Yeah. That, that really, it's a wider, it's just a little bit wider belts and stuff like that. They last a little bit longer. Oh, okay. That's perfect. I mean. Yeah. It looks I'm almost like a sanding kind of tool and it's 130. What it's doing, it's... um. Letting you grind a hollow convex uh, secondary bevel, which is possibly one of the strongest, sharpest bevels, but it's doing it on micron belts. So you can literally take it up to 3,000. It's holding the jig for you. It's holding the angle. It's doing all the work for you, literally. Oh. Once, once you learn how to keep your hand steady, you can pull it through a few times. Sharpest knife you'd ever own. Okay. So it looks like that's from Ken Onion. Yeah. Ken yeah. Onion. Right. Ken Onion. So, um, are you going to have some videos on that, or is it just really straightforward? It would be cool if you did do some videos on that, it. I could probably do. I'd have to buy one. I gave one to another knife maker once I grew out of mine. Okay. So I had to repurchase one, but I might do that just for my customs again. Okay, cool. And then uh, here's another question. Um, what is your favorite steel? My favorite steel to work with, I would say, would be S7. S7, okay, yes. and then people want to know if you have any pics of your titanium knife because they'd like to see what it looks like. <laughs> I actually have one here. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, let's see. Let's see this titanium badness. This titanium. I just had, I just had an idea for a knife. It probably wouldn't be worth a crap. But what are you thinking? You, you know how they 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 make knives from the Damascus steel or or sure. Mm-hmm. Titanium. Yeah, hold on. Let's let's see. Let's lock on it. So there you go. There goes the titanium. <laughs> Here's Looks a good. I like that paint paint splatter effect. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wicked knife. So what does that weigh? Oh, this thing is light. I actually have a scale. Now titanium for holding an edge, good or bad? It's, it's it holds a really sharp, toothy edge, but you can't abuse it like you can't really dig into something hard like wood like if you're going to try to cut wood or something like you will you will exhaust the edge on it but if you're cutting paper if you're cutting cardboard if you're cutting anything softer like it stays super sharp and you don't have to worry about it just know what materials you can and can't use it on that's all yeah and what was the price again on the titanium ones well here's the thing so now with so this is the papa peccary Mm -hmm. And what I do on my Instagram is a win-win where it's a raffle where I'll do like everyone who purchases a win-win says there's 36 spots. They get a titanium peccary, which is a smaller version. It's a, it's about an inch smaller, but it's basically the same setup. And since I'm able to do it in a bulk um, batch, the buy-in prize is only $120. So it brings it down from 350 to 100 just because I'm doing a bigger batch. It's, it's limited to run. So you can get into one of these for 120 but you're going to have to per, uh, play in the win-win raffle, which is not bad because you get perks. Like while you're waiting, you get the, the entry prize knife, and then you also get a chance to win like someone just won this knife here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> really? Uh, today, right. yes, yes. <laughs> wow. So – so it, that's it, nice. it's, a fun, okay. it's a fun way to unload product, um, you know, kind of serving it in a potluck style fashion rather than, you know, come up in order because those take custom orders take a long time. Right. OK. And, and just in case folks don't know out there, you know, Blake is very prolific on the Instagrams. You know, I am, he's, I am. Yeah. soon to be prolific on YouTube. I'm trying to make the transfer over. I'm trying to quiet yeah. down on Instagram and really <laughs> land here on YouTube. I think there's more opportunities yeah but that that's a cool way to do it man so you guys should yeah. really keep an eye on blake and what he's doing because that is a cool way to uh get into something it's kind of like a raffle right but you're you're mm -hmm. everyone's winning something and and when you have the potential to win even more we hand turn these beads so the entry prize people get these and this is again for the edc community which is basically the guys with the fancy knives and they're dolling them up 
they're putting right. functional paracord on it so you can pull it out but they're you know they're adding flair to it so you get a edc bead for every price entry and then again you get to win other prizes like the double stack copper glocks you know i just i have fun with it and then someone wins a very expensive knife and they're very happy <laughs> Oh, that's very cool. So just tell people out there what your Instagram is right now. I know you don't have the YouTube up yet. BMH so Knives. BMH Knives. Yeah, there you go. It should be very easy to find. And uh, Chris B wants to know, what's your process of working uh, titanium forging? Titanium, um, I buy sheets in four by eight sheets, and then I have the profile water jet cut. Once I have it in hand, then I'll hand grind the bevel it's a chisel grind after i hand grind it i then anodize it it's either heat anodized this was um electro anodized an electro uh, solution after that then i carbonize the edge after i carbonize it i sharpen it wrap it and then put a sheath on it okay very cool and th is that a long process yeah it takes um if i were to do the start to finish probably take uh four hours Four man hours to from water jet to grinding and uh, um, carbonizing and sharpening. It, okay. it skips the heat treat process because you're not heat treating. So basically, your heat treat is the carbonized process, which I will have that on YouTube. It's a cool thing. I'm where you're basically taking carbite tip and you're arc welding it into the structure, the molecular structure of the titanium. So when I grind this side, the back side exposes the small carbide um, frame and that's what's actually cutting oh, very okay. very vicious tool this is definitely like a shark tooth action when you cut flesh and everything so okay and so I'm, I'm guessing that you're not gonna make a lot of these right or this is like a limited run kind of thing this will be a limited run whether I hop back from titanium to a2 I think I'll just depending on the season I'm you know I might bring it back just kind of like you know yeah. Model or so. so a lot of the guys that are buying those, are they actually carrying them or did just getting them because of what we're talking about? It's like that, you know, cool knife to have. Well, especially these smaller knives people carry all the time. I mean, everyone just carries a small knife just to, you know, use mm -hmm. daily. You know, it's not very often you're pulling out your big cookery. Yeah, <laughs> so, unless you're Walter. I, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I mean, he walks around with a bazooka. No. So, there you go. No, no. <laughs> Pull out the bazooka. <laughs> Go ahead, pull out the bazooka, Walter. Yeah, but a lot of guys with the smaller knives, they'll carry these. They'll be their daily carry. It'll be, it'll be a lot of these guys also like some of the smaller, um, uh, some of the smaller karambits I use for secondary, primary uh, weapon. If you know, you gun guys, you always like the backups. A lot of a lot of my gun guys say, "Hey, can you fix this? I need this on my rig." I'm like, "Okay, so we'll make a sheath. We'll sneak a knife in there. They don't know it's there until they need it in case they get compromised, you know." Mm -hmm. So, life support. I do a lot of life support um, knives, and those are normally smaller, not as big as you think, because at that point, if someone's got your gun. The, the closest thing is to their neck. You know, if they're going to yeah. shoot you, you got to stop them and with a knife. It's. You wish you had had a big kookery lob their head off, but that's not normally the case. <laughs> right. So I think um, I think Dewan Thomas wants to know uh, what seventy-two by two grinder do you use, and what's a good intro grinder? Manufacturer. Uh, I yeah, uh, manufacturer. Yeah. I use a KMG. I've had it for years. It's great. It's made by Beaumont. KMG. It's really good beginner um, grinder. Ever since this industry exploded, there's so many new grinders out there. So I'm telling you what, do your research because I'm back when I started, there was hardly any offerings and that's all you can get. It was either KMG or another rig that was $5,000. You can't afford that when you first start off knife making. So, so what does that one cost? Uh, the KMG, you can get, get into one for about 1200. Okay. Um, but if, if you're looking to just to get your feet wet, try the uh, craftsman, um, two by 42. Um, they went out of stock last year at Christmas because all these knife makers are trying to buy it. But if you can find a Craftsman two by forty-two, they're around three hundred bucks, and you can make or you can. Let me tell you this: you can grind these knives on that grinder all day. Okay. If I had, if all I had was a Craftsman two by forty-two, and all I was doing is these tantos, I'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. So and it, 
Yeah, and for folks out there who are, you know, who are interested, who are looking, um, you know, you're, you've got videos, or you're going to be putting up videos on YouTube soon, right? Yes, yes, yes. For, for the people out there that um, want to get into yeah, making your own knives. On how to knife, Brian, how to make a knife, how to sell a knife. That's a totally different, totally different arena. If you're trying to make it for profit, if you're trying to make it for a hobby, you know, a lot of, a lot of things you got to sort through and uh, ask yourself before you just start buying tools. Cause I'm telling you the tools are endless. Yeah. <laughs> you a lot of money. In, yeah. And anything, you know, anything sure. that you get into, I mean, a lot know. of times I don't know, man, I don't make knives for a living, but, um, uh, a little more skill can make up for lack of maybe tools. some of those tools. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and here, and I'm glad you picked that up. You, you put that down Walter. the first knife I made, I made with a file and I hand filed the whole thing okay. <laughs> and with a hacksaw. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I filed it with a hacksaw and a hand file. So yeah, you can really make a hardened tool edge and I, and, and I heat treated it in a small soup can forge. I made out of forger's cup, you know, with just a propane map torch. So, and it was, it was hardened. I dipped it in oil and it cut. It's, there's not much science to actually making a knife cut. So yeah. you're absolutely right on that. You know, Try to try to get the skill you can rather than trying to buy. I mean, you it. think back in the olden days, they didn't have electric grinders and they didn't yeah, have all, sure, for sure. all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it had a, yeah. had a I mean, it is, it is a thing that we could do, man. You can you can always go back to making knives, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He, put, put it this way. Walter made a good point. Like, basically, now, this time and age, you have, you're you way better than starting yeah. knife making now than you were, like, you know, back in the medieval days. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of yeah. labor. Yeah. I mean, it's I could cool. go in. I could plug. I can plug into the national gas, natural gas in my backyard. I can set the forge up, and, and I'm and I'm banging something out. You nice. Know? I mean, you know, but you got a forge back there, Walter? Uh, not yet. It's been one of those like on the list, like to do things. <laughs> do it. You need to get it up, man. Get it fired up. I have an I have an anvil. I have an anvil. It's not a super super. Are you missing one. the burner and the forge? What do you need to connect the dots? Um, just doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, Hank the knows time, I, have, I, have, time, yeah. I have lots of projects. So. Yeah, he's got guns to make. <laughs> I hear yeah. There's people I waiting on that. guns, waiting on I their 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's people and waiting on their special Hank 50s. And their Keg 12s, which, by the way, just so, just so that we you know we make sure this is still a gun show, check this out. Oh, Blake, you were asking you know what kind of stuff Walter makes. Here's that's something awesome. right here that's that he makes. Sense. That's one of yeah. them. That's this, one is of them. Called, yeah. this is called the uh, Keg 12. So it's like a shorty style shotgun. That eight seventy, that's Remington. No, uh, this is a Mossberg. I think Walter has a um, different version. He also makes. Also, he also makes uh, the stock like this. Hold on, let me switch over. For the uh, yeah, open the, the AR fifteen. Open the stock oh, nice. again. Yeah. Oh wow. We did this for the AR fifteen, the Sig MPX, and we're working on one for the uh, CZ, CZ Evo. So. Oh wow. That's coming up pretty soon here. So yeah, as well as the fifty uppers and all that. Now this is an AOW thing, so there is a tax stamp, but it's like five bucks. Right. Yeah. Now, how are you how are you producing those? How are you manufacturing it? And well, the shotgun is we take a big shotgun and make it small just by cutting just it. Just customize and, everything. Right, right, right. That stuff we do, and we make the, the the four grips and all that stuff out front. Nice. You guys been working much with Serico? We're having a great time over here with um, that. Stuff. I've I've used it. I don't do it in a production basis. Um, if you I've need any it, parts, I've, I got a good guy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> really All affordable. Right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you don't, I don't know if you know this, but the story of this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Walter. Right. This goes back to Miami Vice days, right? Yeah, That's Miami Vice. They had um, called the Stakeout, which was a um, Ithaca Stakeout, and um, and then after that. Once it was on there, then yeah. So basically, it was something. It was a, a Ithaca Stakeout shotgun. They cut it down, and then Tubbs had it, right? Yeah, something of Tubbs. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know the. I don't remember that. I don't remember that exact. Yeah. Uh, if you go back and look at the, if you go back and look at the, you know, Miami Vice from the '80s, the old things. So yeah, Tubbs. Tubbs had one of these. Like was on the, his cool. white suit or whatever, <laughs> whatever he was rocking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> This oh, is also, nice to have in the car, man, because you could put this right under your car seat. Pull up, you know. What there up? You go. <laughs> yeah. I did a little. I did a little Wikipedia here, and I found out what the what oh, the marks my. are for. It's actually supposedly for uh, the sharpening process. Huh. Um, I thought I read someplace that it had some mythical stuff with the. 
That's things. That's for the sharpening process. Yeah, they hold it in place when they're sharpening. Oh, so they can sharpen it. Yeah, it's I see. Hold that up. Hold that up again. That little area right there. Yeah. What's it called? It is called a a cho. Cho. Okay. A distinctive cut, numeric, new, like numeric three in sh in shape. In the edge, used as a stopper when sharpening with a chat mark. Oh, a choil, I think he's in choil. Yeah, with a chat choil. mark, a chat mark, whatever. I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, so it must be something for positioning and sharpening and all yeah. that. Yeah. So, oh, so okay. Sugar Bear says that yes, uh, Tubbs is the one that had had the uh, had the shorty shotgun. Tubbs. So Tubbs had Tubbs had the shorty shotgun, and yeah. um, nine of okay. So Steve Brian is saying that you're supposed to be on your game. And plugging the fact that 904 Outdoors has a video on that stock, right? Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> so go ahead, yeah, plug it. <laughs> plug yeah, it so, uh, I guess it just came out, I think it was today. He does all our YouTube stuff. I just kind of, <laughs> I'm there, it's pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, not, it's not difficult to be a pretty face versus Steve. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. wow, wow, wow. Wow. I know wow. Steve is loving that one. I'm getting I, 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 not I, there to defend himself either, either, you know. No, he was hey, he was going at me in the chat the other day. He thinks I didn't notice that, but I, I, I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. next opportunity you got us the Steve. other day. Yeah. <laughs> I get, you got I get us back Steve on that back. one. <laughs> Brian, are you on Instagram? Uh yeah, I am. I just actually followed your uh your channel. Oh cool. What's your uh handle? Uh I think it's just Brian Toyed Along. I think so. So Steve says, "Ouch!" <laughs> but if you're looking for the 904 outdoors, right. it's uh, uh, I think it's 904 Nine outdoors. Yeah, 904 yeah, tag outdoors. Me, tag me and picture of both of them, and I'll get it real quick. Tag me in them, and I'll I'll follow you. You yeah. too, Walter. You on Instagram? Yes. Yeah, I'm, uh, Safety Harbor Firearms. If I'm not mistaken, let me just double check. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Safety Harbor Firearms. Yeah, Safety Harbor Firearms. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So. Uh, so um, someone wants to know, Blake, did you go to trade school from knife making? I know we talked about this in the other video, but we might as well hit it up a little bit. Uh, no, all self-taught, all self-taught. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube, yeah. YouTube. I went to YouTube school. Yeah, YouTube there you school. go. That's how, that's how it's done nowadays, yep, baby. That's how it's done these days. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube <laughs> University. <laughs> and we are all professors. Write anyone down, but anyone <laughs> can do it. But yeah. it, it, again, and it just depends on the person who's learning and how how much you, you want to know about it because you can really get way into the uh, metallurgy and all that. But you don't need to know all that to know the mechanics of how to no. make a knife. But it's no. nice to know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you know, ultimately it comes down to uh, art, artistry, right? For sure. Just, just making something sharp, making a cut is just fun. And that's what I'm saying, Walter. If you yes. get out there and you start banging on some steel, man, it's it's therapeutic, man. It's gonna you're gonna get Yeah, it'd be good exercise, actually. I'd be sweating my ass off here in Florida. I mean yeah. we do the same thing in Arizona too, but Yeah, uh, now basically what I need, I don't know where my um I'm trying to see should I, my, should I say what my idea was for a knife? Yeah, go ahead. Hit us Sorry. up with your idea. I'm trying to see oh, I mean, my choke. Obviously, um not um Forging or blacksmith knife people are familiar with Damascus and welding steel together and all that. So I had this idea and sitting here talking. What if you took some rankety old AKs and made a knife blade out of the? That you possibly could. I the, the barrels. What were the barrels steel made out of? Do you remember? Uh, maybe it could be like a forty-one forty. Um, I mean, you're not going to get the world's. You're not going to get the world's best knife out of it, but it'd be durable as hell. <laughs> it make it make a hell of a video. <laughs> All right. Hey, send me some old uh, some old AKs. Okay. I'll, I'll make you a knife out of AK barrels. That'd I mean, the whole. I, I mean, I want taking, one. <laughs> that would be cool. I, I was I thinking can do that. Take, I can take the whole uh, the receiver, barrel, everything, and just meld it into one. You know what would be cool is find uh, two different metals that can be made it together, and from do two different knives, like maybe it's a different era, just so you can get the contrast and the etch. You know, really yeah. bring out the lines. That would yeah. be cool. Now here's a here's a thing that um, here's an idea that I want to just uh, hit you up with here. So uh, like the way this works, like there's a uh, choke tubes there. So this is uh, you know you could thread this in. You can also put suppressors on this. By the way, I have a suppressor for this from uh, Silencer Co. So I'm wondering, man, can we make a knife 
that I could like thread into this. Oh yeah. Ooh, you like know? a tube knife or something. Yeah, the, a knife like uh, that I could put into my like shotgun. A yeah. A yeah, something that can go around maybe one of these, you know, and then we thread it in and there's like knifery going on somewhere yeah. here. Something <laughs> big. So when I run out, because oh, I'm yeah. only gonna get like three shots. Oh, yeah. And then that's it, you're done. Your yeah, close quarters. I, I, and yeah, exactly. So I could just jerk you up. <laughs> you know. Yes. What was Make Walter saying? Axe. Going through the ear, scramble the one through axe. No, 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 no. Straight axe. It's going to be a big. Yeah. That would be so axe. awesome. <laughs> that would be like from a movie right there, man, on this. So. Oh, yeah. Just I, an I, idea. I, just an idea. I have an idea for that blade. But. Yeah. Wardex says uh, knife launcher. Uh, <laughs> Sugar Bear says, uh, "Put nice. a door breacher on it." <laughs> nice, my <laughs> Which I think this is what I think. No, is this a door breacher on here? Um, no. It could be used as a yeah. Yeah, you could. I think you could put this up and breach a door, but or, uh, yeah. Or it's also it's also for this. Move along, move along. Yeah. Move along. Um, <laughs> I think I think a big a big axe or something on the end there is really going to send the message. And look, an, this is a this is a good. This is a good axe handle right here. You got good grip on this for, uh, as an axe handle. You know, you can just really. Oh, I had hey, 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 some here you go. with that. So, how about yeah. something like a? How about oh, something like this? Nice tomahawk. Yeah. Okay, hold a, on. Let me let me lock you in, Walter. We throw, we throw those in the in backyard all the time. Yeah, right? this is this is one I bought. It's a cheap one just for throwing. It's fun. Yeah. Um, um. Actually, this one was bought at one of the scout camps. Actually, so um. Yeah. Go out and teach the boys how to throw in a hatchet or a tomahawk. It's a lot of fun. So, wow. Yeah, you know. So yeah, this would this would fit on the bullet on the barrel. Yeah, absolutely. So okay, now um, you know what? I know What's we've that? been we've we've been we've been going at it for a while. So yeah, you know, yeah, have, yeah. yeah. Let's um, let's see if they're uh, you know. I actually um. I'm sure that Blake has to bounce here, so let's wrap it up. Let's get everyone. Walter, what do you have going on? Uh, uh, what do we got what going on? Week? Oh, hey, I forgot one thing. You want to do the box opening? Uh, okay, let's uh, let's let let's. Okay, you know what, then, Walter, if you're going to open the box, you're, I'm you're down. Let's do the box opening. You, you yeah. got time for the block yeah, for the yeah, box yeah. opening? Let me ask a question cool. first. This is yeah. Okay. So everybody here on the, in, on the interweb, yeah. all of Walter's our Walter's going to do an unboxing <laughs> live. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, of our internet, our internet. Um, let's experts. hope some snakes haven't snuck into the box. The question is, what company is in Exeter, New Hampshire? Exeter, New Hampshire. That would be one of the gun companies, Smith and West. No, Smith and Wesson in Exeter. Who Smith and Wesson feel, or Sig. Who, feel, who are we feel a lot of hate for lately? Sig. <laughs> no. Don't drop that box. <laughs> All right, using my microtech as a as a box opener. Don't drop that box, Walter. Whatever you do, don't drop. Nice. It. Walter, open it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> they had a special going, and they still probably do. Twenty round MPX mags for nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. Yeah, that's that's nice. a big deal. So how many that, did you get? I got eleven. Because if you get eleven, they shipped it for they shipped it for free. If you got eleven. Oh, nice. nice. Okay. So. This would be, you know, back in the days of all the madness, this would probably be a forty, fifty dollar magazine. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. That's nice. cool. So anyone out there that has a MPX, you know, go yeah. get yourself yeah. uh get get in on this deal. Walter, we could use that to test. We have a trigger from K E arms for the MPX. Yeah. We're yeah, gonna yeah. need those magazines to test I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need one of those tactical rigs now to hold yeah. on my magazine. So, yeah. So I hope Sig I hope Sig sees that we're shouting them out. So yeah, because some of us have to go to Shot Show and walk through Shot Show, and Sig's gonna go. That's one of those guys. Hey Hank, That's I'll be in Shot Show. Already setting it up, man. I'll see you there. Oh, you're gonna be oh, there. Going? Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I can use an entourage. <laughs> <laughs> when we you go know, walking through, there's gonna be Sig and a bunch of other companies. And you're like, oh, we're looking for blood. There I'll, goes be, I'll be the knife guy. I'll represent the knives. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. cool. We're there at Shot Show also too. So yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when you come to Shot Show, Blake, definitely check out Safety Harbor Firearms booth. Yeah, you know, if you, you're hanging out. If you need yeah, a place to, sure. if you need a place to hang your head for a little bit and rest or sit down, yeah. Well, like, totally. I mean, last time was my first time there. It was just overwhelming. <laughs> I, didn't even, I was just not even expecting any of that. Yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, it was, it was an experience. Yep. Right. Yep. So you know what? Let's wrap this so everyone can go. It's Friday. I'm sure everyone wants to go eat, party. 
you know, I'm, I, I know we got some people holding on. So, Walter, what do you have? What's coming up? What's going on this weekend? What you got? Uh, this weekend, I'm going to go work on my truck tomorrow, I think. My World War II uh, uh, deuce and half that I have at a friend's house that he's probably right. wondering what I'm ever going to get the hell out of there. Um, nice. And just, just relax a little bit, hang out. I'm not going to cool. do anything too extensive. No, that sounds like fun. That sounds like fun. Send us pictures. All right. So, oh, Brian, what, one, what's one last thing before I go. How many of y'all saw the uh, the uh, Trump rooster on the news? I thought that was a chicken, not a rooster. Was it's it? a rooster. It's Trump. Well, okay, it's Trump. Okay. I got some. I got something coming for that, and it's going to uh -oh. be called. It's called the patch. Uh oh, there's going to be a patch with that. I got okay, a patch, cool. man. I got it coming. That's what's going All right. on. Yeah. We look forward to that. Okay, Brian, what you got going on, man? Uh, we got some videos coming out, of course, for 904 Outdoors. Uh, get ready to hit. You know, of course, we did a few out there with you the other day. Mm -hmm. And pretty much that's it. We just had some new content. Uh, new guns are coming in the works that we're working on that we're trying to get. Ooh. Hopefully, some, some older Colt firearms and things like that. Hopefully. And. Okay. Yeah, that's not it actually that we have. Okay, cool. You know, I encourage everyone to subscribe to 904 Outdoors. Good guys. Yes. They got lots of cool stuff coming out. Yep, yep, yep. So, Blake, what do you have going on, my brother? That's it. Just gearing up for USN in three weeks in Vegas. It's just another knife show, collector's knife show. So, just another that's knife it. Show. be doing some forging at Vegas Forge. They got a huge facility over there, and I'm going to bang me out a piece of Damascus about four feet long. Oh, by cool. Like eight inches wide so i'll be i'll be coming home with some goodies Sweet. You need, cool. i got i got you get I need some scrap guns to, oh i got an i got an idea totally. so i'm telling you if you give me some scrap stuff I'll, i will yeah. definitely make some knives as soon as we i'll hang make up you a billet of damascus and you can fake you can uh, make a knife out. <laughs> yeah. cool yeah as soon as we hang up here we'll exchange info so that we can get okay. some, like we'll try to get some videos out with bmh knives for sure okay. all right i want to thank everyone who's hanging in there we had a lots of people on there i think we were breaking records today Lots of All folks right. hanging out with us. Uh, thanks awesome. for that. Thanks, thanks for the great comments. Um, I want to thank everyone that came on the show, uh, Walter, Brian, Blake. Thank, thank you guys for coming on. I want to thank the sponsors, which Walter is one of them, Safety Harbor Firearms. Of course, we've also got Rand CLP, Andrew's Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. That's where we get the studio and the internet and all that Big kind of Daddy. good stuff from. Can't do it without Big Daddy Guns. Nice. Big Daddy Guns. Yeah, absolutely. Here in Gainesville, Florida. If you're in the Gainesville area, come check out the store. Nice. It's a fun thing. I might even be hanging around there when you come when you come down. And of course, I want to thank everyone that sponsors that looks out for us, supports us on Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. Okay, guys, we're gonna end this with the deuces. Peace out. Peace out. We're out of here.